40 minutes for the dolls, okay? Which is why I'm skipping Poke Doku today, because that takes up like 12 minutes by itself. Just trying to think of some names. Now, Ravencroft. I don't know what this is at present. I'm going to say that this is Matilda 2019. I'm going to say that this is home for Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. Okay, I don't know it. I see Stan Lee right there. I'm going to say that this is New Mutants because it's a, a Marvel movie that I don't know if I've seen. I also see some Chinese text. Ravencroft. It's got to be an X-Men movie, bro. It's got to be an X... They don't have... They got Spider-Man 3 in this bitch. They don't have X-Men. Shang... Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. No? Okay. Brother, I've fucking seen this shit. <laughs> I've seen this shit. We go next. Michelle Williams? X-Men. <laughs> what? Michelle Williams, what are you doing here? Maybe it's not a Marvel movie. No, come on, look at it. It's ah, Venom, let there be carnage. When I get out, there's going to be carnage. Eddie! There we go. Michelle Williams, bro. What's next? Fucking Carrie Mulligan and Captain Marvel 7? I can't. I can't. You know, we saw uh, Exuma yesterday, the Korean horror movie that's, that's going viral in East Asia right now. My verdict on it, good movie. I, I hate to do the Gen Z movie criticism where I say good movie, 7 out of 10, and then I immediately list all my criticisms. The first third of the movie is insanely good particularly there's there's one really 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 amazing scene it kind of my two cents kind of pulls a sunshine about halfway through and then kind of like recovers again afterwards but still it's still a good movie and worth seeing we don't need any more Planet of the Apes movies is what I'm going to say. I know that they're good, okay? You're talking to somebody who owned the first six from the 1960s on DVD. I was such a nerd as a middle schooler. My dad bought me the box set of Planet of the Apes movies as a kid. I know what you're going to say. There's only two. No, there's not. There's Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Escape from Planet of the Apes, Return to Planet of the Apes, fucking Battle for Planet of the Apes, okay? All I'm going to say is that when you get to the point where your movie title has like four ofs in it, you have to cut the franchise. It's too much. K Kingdom of the War of the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The sequel to the sequel to the sequel to the prequel to the reboot of Planet of the... Like, it's just too much, man. Pull it back a little bit. Andy Serkis needs to work too. Bad take. Okay, we love that for him. We do love that for him. I think Furiosa is going to whip though. I've seen the trailer two times. I just, it, maybe this is using a heuristic to evaluate it. I can't really do anything else because the movie's not out yet. Here's my heuristic. Mad Max Fury Road was amazing. It came out 10 years ago. They didn't rush the fucking sequel to print. They took nine fucking years to get it going. And that I simply believe that and Anya Taylor-Joy since the Playmobil movie does not take bad roles. The end. After his Patriots tenure, Drew Bledsoe went 23 to 25 as the starting QB of this AFC team. It's the Bills, bro. I was there. In 2003, when Chad Pennington was the future of the Jets, I was there. I told the Baltimore Ravens, don't draft Kyle Baller. 
You'll never make a dime. As head coach, Terry Stotts led this team to eight consecutive playoff appearances from 2014 to 2021, including a run to the Western Conference Finals. Houston Rockets in the James Harden era. Oh! <laughs> Portland Trailblazers, of course. This Argentinian golfer. Oh, no. Sergio Garcia. Not from, not from Argentina. From Spain, I'm going to guess. From Spain. I don't know who it is. Angel Cabrera. Well, I don't know who that is, so they got me on that one. What is the capital of Cuba? That's a tough one. That's, that's about as tough as the name an Argentinian golfer from 2007 question. What is the capital of Cuba? Okay, that's, that's Polly D. That's DJ Polly D from Jersey Shore. And um, Corey? Who are you? Oh, man, I don't know. I feel like it might be Chad Michael Murray. Are you Ryan Gosling? Are you... Brother, I'm looking at his face. It doesn't look like Ryan Gosling, but it looks like Ryan Gosling. That's all I can say. Or am I really going to throw out a Chad Michael Murray there? I got to go Ryan Gosling. I'm sorry. DJ Polly D and Ryan Gosling. No! Keith Urban. Ah, it is Keith Urban. The skillet queso Big Mouth Bites and Southwestern Egg Rolls are fan favorites from what sit-down chain? Have you just given up on making good food as soon as you describe your restaurant as sit-down? We're not like other restaurants. We have chairs. This must be Chili's, bro. It must be Chili's. It is Chili's, okay. <laughs> it's that easy. Katie Seagal, Ron Perlman, Charlie Hunnam, Sons of Anarchy. Sons, Sons of Anarchy, never saw it. With a 1% Rotten Tomatoes score, Kim Kardashian and Carmen Electra were featured in this 2008 parody movie that earned six Razzies, including Worst Movie. Um, I'm going to say that that's uh, Meet the Spartans. It's not, it must be one of the superhero movie, epic movie, something like the disaster movie. It's disaster movie. <clears throat> After gaining fame in 2015 for his song White Iverson, this singer rapper had number one hits with Sunflower. I know that one, that's Post Malone. I, kn I know Sunflower and I know um, Rockstar. Like a rock star. How you gonna have a 12 car garage when you've only got 15 cars? Cause they own this one. You know what I'm talking about. You got it. It's five correct, four incorrect. I can take that. Circles is pretty good. That I, I think I heard that one on the Peloton. Is that the one that's like... Um, Wait a second. I can I can I can fabricate it in my head. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something like that, right? Who let him cook? I'm trying to it it's I remember hearing it and being like on the on the Peloton and being like that's a pretty good song. It's got the, the um, this is like the worst description of a song ever. The chorus has the hook. The chorus has the hook. There's like a hook in the, it's the chorus is really hooky. You know what I'm talking about? He had the freak lips. Tiny boop squig shorterly. That's the one. <laughs> Seasons change and I'm running in circles. 
What are you talking? That isn't that Tame Impala? Now I'm confused. I gotta listen to that song again. As soon as I hear like the first six notes, I'm gonna have it all figured out. <clears throat> Fuck, I only got 30 minutes left, bro. We gotta speed it up. Connections. Buzz. Buzz. F fry, <laughs> fry, boil, scramble, poach. Now, this is where I'm like, is this too obvious? Is this too obvious, bro? Ways to cook an egg? You, got, you know what? If you got me, you got me. I'm going to make you have it. That's the number one rule of poker. Okay. Thrill, buzz, rush, and kick. What you feel when you dip something in Mama Liz's chili oil? Horseshoe, axe, dart, ring. Things you toss. <laughs> Types of wrap. Body wrap, gift wrap, shrink wrap, bubble wrap. I mean, this is actually the easiest connections I've ever seen. Did they cyber bully the New York Times into making like kindergarten level connections? New York Times has fallen. Not a single shot was fired. Sad. They got to get whoever cooked up the emoji one on April Fool's back. Don't different days have different difficulty levels? They do, but it's not based on the difficulty of the puzzle. It's based on how much sleep you had last night, where your blood sugar is at, you know, have you been preoccupied thinking of something else? I, what was your sleep health? Not just how much sleep you had, but did you get interrupted in your REM cycle by your daughter crying that she didn't have a pillow and then you walked into her room and the pillow was literally right next to her and she could have gotten it herself? Tiny bit of kindling. I will take the ring to Mordor, though I do not know the way speaker. Frodo. Screenwriter Sorkin. Aaron. Suffix with Lewis and Jackson in city names. Saint. Trimmed parts of green beans. Ends. Okay, something's not right here. One might be on track to arrive. A train. Hang on. A trarn. A, a, huh. How much sleep you had last night? Were you interrupted in the middle of your sleep? What in the NORAD? What in the world? Number one choice, informally. Fave. Missing. Gone. Villy! That can't be right. Tiny bit of kindling is a twig. I do's. Venerated celebrities, idols. <coughs> the hell is Ville Lewis? Sounds like a French boxer. 148 is, is fucking horrible, bro. That's an embarrassment. Oh, Louisville! I got my suffixes confused with my prefixes. Oh, brother. Del Real Cheese Chili Tamale. 15 six ounce tamales. Can I tell you something? We were at Costco yesterday. You're going to say, what'd you get? Don't worry about it. All the stoke was sold out, so I couldn't take advantage of the, the stoke cold brew offer, but that's okay. That's what happens when you lower the price. Demand increases. Back me up, D.L. Guiga. What was the, the main frustration at Costco this time? Couldn't get into the frozen food aisle. Why couldn't I get into the frozen food aisle? Had to wait like three minutes. Free samples. They, people were clogging the shit up for free samples. You're going to say, bro, don't be mad at them. It's probably like an air fried jalapeno bite or something like that. That's primo. Nah, you know what it was? 
little ramekin full of cinnamon toast crunch. You never tasted cinnamon toast crunch before? Fucking eight middle-aged adults with no kids amongst them waiting for three grams of wheat and cinnamon sugar cereal? Like, what's wrong with you? It's crazy. What time are you going to Costco when it's that full? Anytime, bro. It's a popular store. Did you get the nine pound can of jalapenos? I did not. You know what's great about Costco in a way? You're going to have to back me up here a little bit, okay? You're going to have to give me a minute. Costco is a, like the ultimate capitalist store, but it actually looks like what Dwight Eisenhower was afraid American grocery stores would look like if communism took over. Like it's the ultimate melange of communist grocery store and capitalist grocery store. It's capitalist because things cost money, there's sales, there's pricing pressures. It's communist because the state has stripped out 98% of your options. If you go into a normal grocery store, your wife says, can you get some Cheez-Its? You're standing there, Cheez-Its, big Cheez-Its, small Cheez-Its, white cheddar Cheez-Its, extreme flavor Cheez-Its, reduced salt Cheez-Its, Keto Cheez-Its, Cheese Bits, Cheese Nips, like it, it never ends. You go into Costco, I had to get deodorant. They said, you got two choices, motherfucker. Dove for men or Old Spice. I said, ah, oh, what the fuck? I guess I'm going Old Spice. I'm going deodorant B. Maybe, ne maybe after I finish six sticks in 10 years, I'll go back and go deodorant A, you know? It's got to be the Dove. I don't like the Dove for Men antiperspirant because I know how this sounds. I feel like the, anti I've said it many times before. I feel like it's too strong. You, put, you take a shower, you put the deodorant under your arms. When you take a shower the next day, you're, it's still sandpaper under there. I don't want, I, I want the deodorant to not last that long because it feels weird when you, when you do the armpit wash and like your armpit is still hydrophobic. As crazy as it sounds, I, I feel like I need a worse deodorant. I need it to last through the day, but certainly not through the night. Anyway, I have no idea how much tamales cost. I have to feel like realistically, these can't be more than a dollar fifty each. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one at nine ninety nine. Okay, uh, well, I'm not buying it then. Eleven ninety, oh, fourteen ninety nine, sixteen ninety nine, seventeen ninety nine. What a fun game! Eighteen forty. No, I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. It's fifteen tamales, bro. I'm just gonna tell you something straight up. If you're buying a plastic bag full of tamales from Costco, you know they're not gonna fucking be good. So why are you paying like a buck twenty per tamale? You know they're gonna suck ass. They should be cheaper. It's your store. You you gotta know what you're walking into when you go into Costco, okay? Like I went into Costco. I, there's, there's some stuff in there that shouldn't exist. I bought. Six shelf-stable soups. You know what you have to do to a soup to make it shelf-stable? It's warm meat and vegetables. It's like a bacteria's wet dream. I don't want to know what kind of fucking polycarbonate isomers they had to put in the soup in order to make it shelf-stable. It's not in a can. It's in, like a, it's in a microwave-safe plastic tub. This shit is made of fucking plutonium. I guarantee it. I'm telling you straight up, I, I don't expect the soup to be good. What I do expect it to do is be ready three and a half minutes after I finish my stream and provide me with some vitamins uh, and some calories so that I can get through the afternoon. You got to know what you're getting into. Bro's eating the three billion calorie soup. It's a plutonium joke, but I do have to say, if I have one complaint about the soup, it's a joke at this point, but it's also true. 
the fucking soup is like 210 calories per bowl. That's not enough, man. I got to I got to have like the soup and a McDouble on the side to to hit my macros. Even if you're eating 2000 calories a day, I would consider on the low side depending on your level of activity. 200 calories that buys you like two hours, bro. It might, in fact, because you're only awake like 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day, it might even buy you like an hour and a half. You're taking 30 minutes to eat a bowl of soup that's only lasting you an hour after you finish eating it? It doesn't make any sense, man. Okay, we have 20 minutes left. I'm sorry, I have to cut some dulls. <laughs> it's got to be done. Who takes 30 minutes to eat soup? The shit is hot, bro. I don't want to burn the roof of my mouth. And then it's like, oh, it hurts when I burn the roof of my mouth. And then I wake up the next day and then I got like a canker sore. And I'm like, why do I have a canker sore? It's like, all oh, right, because I burned the roof of my mouth. Like, it's all like connected in there, man. Throw an ice cube in it. But then it's, uh, then I'm watering down the soup. I get it's like the wateriest food you can have, but still. I'll just fucking take a half hour to deal with it, okay? You can mind your own business. Why are you spending 45 minutes insulting my life choices? 20th Century Fox, October 3rd, 2014. $37 million opening weekend. Not exactly a blockbuster. Starring Ben Affleck, 2014. First pick, The Accountant. Genre. Mystery, thriller, drama. It's Gone Girl. By the way, I have to say, a little bit of meta commentary. When I was at the movie theater yesterday, of course, you know me. We're 35-year-old guys. Of course I got to go to the bathroom once during every movie. Went to the bathroom. The theater next to us was playing Zone of Interest, the Jonathan Glazer film. But because of the cooked marketing at Cineplex, every movie poster frame says, like, your escape begins in... And then it's, or begins at, and then it's the time that the movie starts. And I was like, this is a fucking meta commentary. Because, like, they're, say, they're treating the movie as fucking, like, escapism. The movie itself is kind of, a, from what I understand it, is about, like, willful ignorance of atrocities that are happening simultaneously literally like feet away from where the house is and i was like this it's fucking so meta even this acronym bro you guys aren't ready for that one but once zone of interest hits fucking the 2b channel people are gonna be like he was cooking once that shit's on in roku city you guys are gonna be like i get it now 37, this is a close opening weekend, bro, starring Annabelle Wallace. <laughs> Before The Conjuring, there was fucking Annabelle. Okay? The movie is called Annabelle, and it stars someone named Annabelle. Is this Anna, is Annabelle the doll? Is Annabelle a real person? I don't know what's going on here. Me when I go to see Zone of Interest and the <laughs> when I see the fucking Colonel Colonel commercial where the popcorn bends over backwards so that it gets eaten. I'm like, what, the, what are we doing here, guys? I'm not even clicking anything. I'm just looking at it. $64 million. Pretty standard fall week two. Starring Denzel Washington from 2014. So the Equalizer. One. It is the Equalizer one. It's kind of crazy that uh, Denzel Washington was like, I, I never do sequels. Bro made three Equalizer movies. That's where he folded. I'm not hating on him. I'm just saying it's an interesting observation. Focus features, back when they existed, 31% decline, $32 million, starring Ben Kingsley in 2014. Now that is a tough one. It's too late for the whackness. 
genre is animation, comedy, family, fantasy. That's it's not my area of expertise. Let's go down and take a look at 20th Century Fox starring Dylan O'Brien. Tagline, remember, survive, run. Well, thanks for that. Dylan O'Brien. It's Maze Runner. The Maze Runner. Seems around it's the right time. It is the Maze Runner. Okay. No other clue was going to help me out there. That's for sure. Well, this clue would have helped me out. The boys are all trapped in a maze to join forces with fellow runners. What's your thoughts on free popcorn refills in movies? People aren't going to like my take. I have a fucking Herculean appetite and zero self-control. And I have never in my life finished a bag of movie theater popcorn during a movie. I don't know what kind of state I would have to be in to not only finish the bag, but then be like, I want some more. Like usually by the time I'm like halfway through the bag, I'm like... I shouldn't even be eating it. And then I keep eating it for like another 10 minutes. But then I'm like, get it out of here, man. Do you have a brain deficiency? Yeah, you got a real superior brain. <laughs> for sure. Eating fucking 3,400 calories of, of pure salt and simulated butter. Probably taking like 10 days off your lifespan. So what? You don't feel like you got ripped off by the concession prices? Can you do a, a, an analysis? Can you do a compare and contrast of that one? But I'd rather have 10 days of life, of health, seeing my family, enjoying the splendor of the world, or <laughs> twice as much fucking popcorn. Info, I've already eaten one day's worth of calories just in popcorn since I sat down in the chair 90 minutes ago. That's a tough one. That's, that's a tricky one. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. When I was 19, I would have given you a different answer for sure. I know you're like, no, no, no. I'm not going to let the movie theater rip you off. Brother, they ripped you off the second you walked into the movie theater. They're selling you 80 cents worth of popcorn for 15 bucks. They basically just provide a chair and a screen. They didn't make the movie. They didn't even make the chair. They don't do anything. Okay? No, I, I like the movie theater. I like going. But there is no, like, you lose the second you, you buy into it. If that's the, the axis that you're trying to evaluate the purchase on. All they're doing, it's, it's like going to a fucking, pick a DJ that nobody likes. It's like going to a David Guetta concert. All he's doing is hit and play and then, you know, pretending he's working for the next 90 minutes. Saved, saved. <laughs> I love it because it's the magic of cinema. I mean, I'm with you, Jay. People are ready. I'm, I'm, I'm going off today, okay? For the, my entire lifespan, when I was one year old, is the same. I'm 35 now. It's the same. Everybody complains about the cost of going to the movie theater. I'm here to tell you, my two cents is actually like the cheapest night out as an adult that you can fucking have, bro. Two hours of entertainment for 25 to 30 bucks more if you get snacks, obviously. How are you beating that on date night, bro? How are you beating that on date night? Go for a walk? We fucking been married for nine years, bro. How many walks do you want me to go on? We're seeing Kino Cinema. We clown in this motherfucker. People were like, oh, seeing Dune 2 cost me 80 bucks. Let me get four fucking D-Box IMAX tickets at the local Megaplex. I had no choice but to get combo number seven. It comes with four drinks, three popcorns, two candies on the top shelf, two candies on the bottom shelf. Oh, they suckered me into buying the Blu-ray because they said if you want to buy the Blu-ray later, it's going to be 30 bucks. But if you buy it before you even see the movie, it's only 22. How could I not? That's fucking exercise some self-control, motherfucker. If you got to hire a babysitter, that doesn't apply. That's true. Seeing the Batman in theaters cost us like 130 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> How
How? 20 bucks an hour for the babysitter. $1 per movie ticket. $150 for parking. We don't go to that theater anymore, though. Two thousand dollars for candles. Okay, wait, wait, focus features Ben Kingsley. When troubles strike, friends stack together. Matroshka the movie. No, okay, friends. Lego the the focus pictures did not make the Lego movie. The weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. The film. An orphan. Oh, it's the box trolls. The box trolls. <laughs> 61st percentile, bro. We still did pretty well. Oh, you guys don't know the box trolls? Isaac Hempstead Wright. I, I hope he does. Never heard of it? Probably came out before you were born. No disrespect. Bro went from Gandhi to the box trolls. Okay, real quick. RT, the box trolls. 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. Show some respect. 63% audience score. That's how you know that shit is good. The critics liked it more than the audiences. I got to put that on the fucking... On my letterbox rush, bro. How about Gandhi? How about Gandhi? 1982 Gandhi. Okay, I said an 89. Pretend I said anything. <laughs> People like that one a lot. Let's go down to the... Let's go down. We got 10 minutes here. We got to go fast. Let's only play the hits. Like a Weezer concert. Poke Doku? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Sweat. A <laughs> verb meaning to excrete moisture in... Yeah, okay. I mean, like, I don't have a problem with the words, but it's the way she's saying them. Tufts. A verb meaning to provide or adorn with a tuft. Tufts. Oh, tufts. A verb meaning to provide tufts. or adorn with a tuft. Simmer. Of Did you have to? Castle. A noun meaning. What you should do in chess. Gusto. A noun meaning. Restaurant that used to exist in Kingston, Ontario. Rallies. A noun meaning a mustering of scattered forces to. Yes. Newfoundland. Yeah, dude, they're so Canadian pilled lately. Why should you castle? Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Chad, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that it provides the king with safety while simultaneously freeing your rook to begin attacks on the columns adjacent to where its position is. Oh, brother. Oh, no. Investigation. A verb meaning to observe or study. I'm familiar with it. Sundering. A verb meaning to break apart. Today's the perfect, bro. Devoid. A adjective Devoid meaning... Devoid shower handle. Profiterol. A noun Profiterol. meaning a miniature cream mm, puff. A cream puff. Cyrillic. A adjective meaning of... Relate... Hmm. Russian. Judoka. A noun meaning mm. one who participates... Karate doer. Keynesian. A noun meaning the economic mm. theories and programs Economist. ascribed to John. Necromancer. Mm. A noun meaning conjuration of the spirits uh, of the dead for purposes of magically lifter. revealing the future or influencing the course of a. He's out of control, bro. <laughs> lich. Oh, Lich. Of course. Results 15 of 15. Easiest day I've ever seen in my life. Don't lie to me. I would say 73% of you are not getting Keynesian, okay? That's my own cross to bear, but it served me well today. Food guesser took it personally, bro. Have I been over on the right side of the screen the whole time? <laughs> I'm usually on the left for this, bro. This is Balatro posting. Kidney beans, onions, garlic, coriander, cilantro, walnuts, red pepper flakes, pomegranate, molasses, and fucking flat parsley. I have no idea, bro. I would assume, 
I don't even know where they grow pomegranates, but I'm going to assume this is like South America. I'm going to take a guess that this is Peruvian cuisine. It's ice cold, bro. This shit is like from North Africa. This is probably from Morocco. That's cool. This shit is from Southern Europe. Perhaps a Romania. Warm. <coughs> it's southeast of Romania. Perhaps a, like a Lebanon? North of Lebanon. And southeast of Romania? I mean, this is tough, man. Its origins date back to ancient times. Fantastic. Name is Lobio. It might not be Lobio, but it's my loving one lunch show. Oh, let's hear it for the... Georgia. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, saved. I've never seen Lobio before in my life. That's bones. Goat, goat trotters. <laughs> goat trotters. Onions, garlic, ginger, tomato, turmeric, coriander, cumin, fennel, cardamom, bay leaves, cloves, cinnamon, chili powder, garam masala. It's every curry recipe ever, yet they all taste different and they all taste delicious. Um... I mean, I, I must assume that this is India. Paya. Somebody tell me what goat trotters are. Feet, I'm assuming, because that's what trots. It is feet. Okay. This is Korean fried chicken, bro. Or is it, I, I mean, maybe it's General So's chicken because it has hoisin sauce. I mean, I want this shit from China or America, bro. <laughs> I don't really want to say China for it, but ice cold USA, America, the the United United States of America. There we go, General So's chicken. You're telling me they didn't invent that shit in fucking Beijing? I know I've said it many times before. I apologize. One of my favorite anti-millennial videos, I say this as a millennial, is the BuzzFeed video where they have second generation Chinese Americans eat P.F. Chang's and they're going like, oh, this is like nothing like they do it in China. This fucking sucks. And then they give the P.F. Chang's to their parents who moved from China to America and they're all like, this shit is fucking fire, bro. <laughs> this is sick. We did not do it like this in China, but the orange chicken is still really good. Anyway. Sheesh. I think it's, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a second generation thing, because honestly, how would I know? I think it's a millennial thing to be obsessed with the idea that authenticity necessarily equals quality like i'm sure there's lots of traditional chinese food that probably tastes pretty bad if it's cooked badly i'm sure there's probably lots of dudes out there in idaho that are cooking up some fire beef broccoli honestly you gotta you gotta taste the food before you judge it just on the rubric you know food goes crazy it's damn true Like, I believe that, on average, the pasta is probably better in Italy than it is in Canada. But then there's a part of me that's like, why? We're the fucking new world. We had the first tomatoes, bro. We, you can't send semolina flour on, like, a cargo ship across the Atlantic Ocean or something like that. Like, we... No, dude, you don't understand. It's the fucking, it's like the New York pizza thing. It's the little microbes in the water make the pizza taste better, bro. Ludwig said the sushi in Japan was the same as in California. 
I disagree a little bit, but I see where he's going with that. You, I've had some amazing sushi in Japan. I've had some really good sushi in Vancouver. You know what Japan doesn't have, though? Is like a, a restaurant that's called like Yamamoto Sushi. And it serves General So's chicken, sushi, pho, Korean food, fucking hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken fingers, <laughs> bubble tea, Coke Zero, pizza, <laughs> samosas. They don't have that shit over there, man. This bit again, it's a perfectly cromulent bit, okay? Okay, we should slash marker this. Sorry, we didn't get into all the dulls today, but I think we had fun nonetheless. 